Uh, we work for Four Lights. This is Defenders Attack. Uh, this is a tower defense game. Uh, if you are completely unfamiliar with tower defense, probably the example everybody knows is Plants vs. Zombies. Uh, you get enemy troops that are coming that are coming at you. They start at one end, they go to another end. They have an opening portal, an end portal, and your job is to keep the enemy troops from getting from A to B. So we'll start up a single player game, and I should be able to explain it a little easier. And you guys are uh, PC exclusive only? Oh no, PC and Mac. PC and Mac, okay. Yep. Sweet. So the the map here, uh -huh. this is uh, this is one of our really simple maps uh, for the single player game to get used to it because the real version of the game is the multiplayer game. Single player, uh, like I said before, you've got two starting points, two ending points, and the color coding is just so you know where the exit is. On our multiplayer games, we have some maps with multiple entrances, but one exit. So the color corresponds to the exit. It's uh, it's fully it's fully mazeable, uh, which some tower defense games have. Plants vs Zombies does not. Um, but this game, you can totally change where the creeps are going to go for all of the ground pathing. So you can force them to take very long trips and need provisions before they get to their destination. Um, let's see. Uh, up here, you've got your life total. Works just like Plants vs. Zombies, where uh, for each creep that starts down here and makes it to the end, you lose one life. And the idea of building these towers is this red ring is it's the radius that it can hit the creeps. And yeah, you wanna you wanna build these towers not only to block them, but also to shoot them. So you, it's good to to maximize. Like right here, forces a whole it forces all of the enemies to go through this really narrow pass. Correct. And you can keep that up the whole way down. Now, yeah. are you limited to just that amount of space to really put units, or is that well, expandable? You're 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 limited to like, well all of these spaces. Of yeah, spaces. I mean, yeah. The only times you can't build is if you're out of money. Uh, if you can't build there, like you can't build if it's outside of the build area, or if it is the last place that the creeps can go through because you can't fully block them. So for instance, I can't build here because you can't fully block the path. Um, yeah, and actually as the tooltip just brought up on screen, uh, the G key toggles on the ground paths, the F key brings up the air paths. Um, the ground paths, fully mazeable. The air paths are only partially mazeable. Usually the air path when it's in a tower defense game can't be affected at all. In our game, you can build the white tower when it's available for, um, it's got sort of a gravity function where it can, where it pulls in the air paths. So you do have some control over the air paths. The only towers that don't affect the air are the green tower and there, and the upgrades of the blue tower. Yeah, I think those are the only ones that don't affect air. All the rest of them, it'll shoot the air, it'll shoot the ground, you're good to go. Um, let's see, uh, the creeps have different um, buffs that they'll get over time. So, uh, and it shows up here in the top right. Right now, I'm getting the death split creeps. That means when they die, they split into two and keep going. Um, so it's very prudent to make sure that they die because if you kill them right next to the exit, they split into two and you lose two lives instead of one. Now, uh, just a really basic question for uh, someone that's kind of beginner, how accessible is this game for someone that has never played a game like this before? I would say that it's pretty accessible. Uh, it's, it's very... It's very forgiving because one of the one of the uh, aspects of the game is 100% sell. Usually in a game, in a tower defense game, once you've placed something, if you don't like where it is, if you sell it, you don't get all of your money back. But in our game, you get everything back. And the other thing is that not only can you sell it by clicking, but you can also just hold down the R button, and if you made a really bad decision, you can change it very quickly. So you get to learn a lot on the fly. 
Uh, and it's also much easier to learn while playing a multiplayer game because you can see how the other people are making their decisions and it helps you to get used to how to play. So, and, but the single player is a really great way to get used to the interface, um, like, you know, listing how much money you have, um, the tool tips coming up on the screen. I would say it's fairly accessible. Um, how, how, uh, you said there was a campaign in the game? A campaign? Story mode or is it just... No, no, they're, they're, this is the single player okay. mode and you're just playing, there's no story mode. Okay. Uh, there's just, this is the single player where it's you and the computer is deciding what to send you and it's also deciding what tower upgrades you're going to get. Really? Like, but in, uh, in multiplayer, there's two different positions on a team. One is commander. The commander is the person who decides what enemy, what troops are being sent to the enemy and what towers are being upgraded for your team. And then there's the regular player and they're mostly in charge of building towers, trying to stop what the enemy commander is sending at your team. So there's, there's both of those players and they have to communicate well. And we've built lots of options into the game for great communication between players. So we've got two different draw buttons. The shift key, if you hold it down, the commander can say, this is a bad area. We need better support here. You need to build black towers. Or, you know, this is where we need this. There's also the Q key. It's a ping and it'll highlight a square, and it brings up this exclamation point. Anybody can click on that team, can click on it, and it's a snap to ping. There's also the control key. It's a draw key also, but it goes over the UI. So the commander could say, hey, Science42, you've got a lot of money. You need to start spending that stuff. We need more tower upgrades, or we're gonna, or we're gonna start losing, uh, losing lives to the enemy. Um, and there's also built-in voice chat, very solid built-in voice chat. You hold down the E key and you can talk. You let up, no talk. Oh, awesome. What can we expect this game to be released? Fall 2014. Fall 2014. Single player will be free. Wow. If you buy a full copy for $20, then you've got three single accounts that can piggyback on your game so you can play a full four on four. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time. Oh, yeah. Appreciate Thank you, you man. Yeah. Thank you.